Any good leader will tell you that planning for any and all contingencies is imperative for success. Hello again everyone, I'm Eli's dad with Project Eli where we educate, lead, and inspire. And one of the things that I teach uh, in my leadership classes is that coaching and leadership are very, very similar. Now as a coach, what do you do? Well, you look at the scouting report, the film, the stats, and any other sources of info that you can find. And you especially solicit the opinions of other coaches that have played against that particular opponent. What do you do if the other team presses or the score is tied with only seconds remaining in the game or your top scorer isn't available? Who's the biggest threat on the other team? What tendencies are consistent in their play? Who's the poor foul shooter in case you have to foul at the end of the game? What time does the bus need to leave to arrive on time for the game? What about the traffic? Do you have all the medical supplies that you're going to need for the game? Tape, ice packs, whiteboard, chalk, and on and on and on. As a leader, you must anticipate all scenarios. Remember, managers look to run a system efficiently. Leaders must always look at the results and the data to anticipate changing trends and what potential situations may evolve. You've got to have a plan B and your troops must be prepared to implement it. You don't call a play at the end of the game if you haven't practiced that play because your players aren't going to run it well. You have to anticipate what's going to happen in practice. Should our policy be governed by, part, by partisan politics? You know, one of the things that we hear over and over and over and over again from this administration is you know, they left me with the, the cupboard was bare. It was completely bare. Now, we're more than three years into this administration. And I heard a really good analogy describing what this White House is calling keeping the cupboard bare. It's kind of like buying a used car and then three years later saying to the guy that sold it to you, Hey, I'm out of gas. How come there's no gas in the tank? You know, public health is critical to our national security, to our global security, and to our economic security. When you're at war, and we are certainly at war, you prepare for all contingencies. Nationwide deaths are now being mentioned like drive-by shootings are mentioned in Chicago. I live in the suburb of Chicago and they, they'll have 20 or 30 people every weekend that get shot and killed in the city of Chicago. They never happen in different places, but you know what happens to those stories? They're on page seven. They're not even on the front page. They're not even the lead story in the news. We've become hardened to the fact that that happens over and over and over and over again. What's my point? Every day when we turn on the news and we look at the number of deaths that have increased due to this virus and the number of cases that are getting larger and larger and larger, and we look at the percentage of what's happening in the United States versus the rest of the world, our, our attention is not focused on that. It's focused on partisan politics. The key thing for a leader, the key thing for a leader is to ask the right questions and be prepared for their answers. How about some of these questions? What's the plan for the fall? What's plan A? What's plan B? What is the plan if there's really a bad second wave? And what if it what if it what's the plan if it coincides with a really bad flu season? Are there enough masks and PPE equipment? Can we keep healthcare workers safe? Do we have any kind of early warning system in any state commute or community for when things are starting to get bad again? You see, in crisis scenarios, P 
people are starved for leadership. They look for leadership. I, you know, when I was coaching and it was game it, down to the end of the game, and we have the ball with you know seven seconds left, we have a timeout. It's a tie score. All of the kids who are normally talking all the time and you can't get them to keep their mouth shut, somehow they were all sitting there, quiet, saying, "Okay." We're in a crisis situation. What do we do now? What's up? What? What? What's the plan? How are we going to move forward? I don't see the plans. Now I've heard about a vaccine coming before the end of the year, which would be unbelievably terrific, solving all problems. Have we got a distribution system? Is that all set up? How are we going to do that? Is it going to be run by the federal government, the state government, by local governments? Who's going to do that? We need to get those plans in action just in case something unbelievably good happens, and I hope it does. Wouldn't that be great? The key thing in good leadership is asking the right questions. So let's focus not on partisan politics. Let's focus on solving the issues at hand, please. And because we will never end a meeting on a philosophical note, let's all get out there and charge. I'm Eli's dad.